Hello everyone, it's Linda from Full Moon Studio. A warm, warm welcome back to the channel. I've been away a long time. Um, apologies for that. And a big, big thank you for sticking with me. And a huge thank you to my new subscribers because even though I've not been around, um, the numbers are slowly ticking up. We're nearly at a thousand, which would be great. Um, so yeah, I'm back. Um, and so I am back with um, a design team project for Cara Brand and Creations. Now I'm not on Cara's design team at the moment. I'm just doing this as a guest designer, but I fell in love with this uh, new kit and I thought really want to play with that. Um, I'm not gonna do a huge flip through detailed because I will link you um, to Cara's own because she'll explain a bit more about it. Um, but basically um, it's very kind of taken the sort of Tim Holtz vibe from the latest release. Um, so let me just show you, there are what I would call six, if you like, main journal pages. So, you know, this sort of size ready to fold. So that one, uh, that one, that one, that one, that one. Oh, I think that makes it seven, actually, that one. Then there are three kind of background pages. So in all of it, you've got this kind of ledger at the back and then um, these, you know, paint, paint swatches over the top. So there's a pink one, greeny yellow, bluey going through into greens. And then there are three or four, what I would call kind of collage pages. And these are always my favorite pages in a kit. So very pretty. Um, this one, uh, this one, this is probably my favorite page in the whole kit because it's got birdies. So that's that. Okay. So three collage pages. Then there are eight mini tags. And there are six large tags. So that's the first three. That's the second three. And then we get on to, ah, ah, now journal cards. Now I've got a funny feeling this is one of Cara's Friday freebies, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, so here's some journal cards again, that's in the kit. Some lovely ephemera. Um, I think Cara said these little portraits are taken from Victorian calling cards, something like that. Then some super um, pieces of ephemera, some more bits of ephemera, these lovely paint charts. Um, this I've cut down, but this is, I don't know whether you want to call it a collage sheet or whatever. It's not exactly the same size all the way through. Um, so bits and pieces there. And then there are, as I said, there's some nice bits and pieces um, in Cara's coffee shop as a freebie. So I will link everything you need linked down below for you so you can go off and have a good look at that. Okay, um, so, you know, I have come to the conclusion that really I like working small. Um, I'm quite a small person. I, um, you know, used to make jewellery and I used to make it with seed beads. Um, stained glass, I make little pieces. Everything I make, I do tend to make on a smaller scale. And I think, um, you know, part of my problem is, you know, the biggest journal I want to make really is Traveller's Notebook. I, I personally find this difficult. Um, although I have done some this size, um, but I like mini. And I think today what I'm going to do is a mini project, um, going to be very, very accessible, um, easy beginners project. Um, so it's, it's this, um, it's a little mini journal. And all you need for it, I'm just going to pop these out away from it, is three sheets of A4 cardstock. Now, I have um, originally made this, <laughs> made it in black. Um, and then I thought, you're not going to see um, what I'm doing if I do it in black. Um, so I'm going to use this watercolour paper. Um, so it's got a nice texture and it's, um, you know, it's flexible. Um, so, you know, it's heavier than the scrapbook paper. It's not really, really thick card. Um, so quite nice. Oh, I like the noise of that. Right. So let's get started. I've got measurements. I will put them all down below for you. Okay. So you don't have to worry about trying to write it down as we go. So let's make the cover. Now I'm working with A4 and A4 measures 21 centimeters this way and it measures 29.8, something like that this way. In other words, it's not quite 30. Um, it's a pain and it's always difficult trying to get the exact middle line there. So what I'm going to do is trim it down to 29 centimeters. Okay, so I'm just going to take basically a centimeter, just less than a centimeter off. So let's do that at 29. Okay, so that's all that's come off of that. And now I want to score it 
at 14.5 because that's half of 29. Okay, and then I'm going to turn around and remember this is 21, so I'm going to score at 10.5. If you can hear a clunk, that's Mr. Mac just coming in the door. Right. I'm just going to give that an extra go on, you know, just both sides, just to stretch the fibers a wee bit more, make it easier to fold over. OK. So all we're going to do now is fold it in half, like so, and fold it in half again. OK. And you can see that, you know, it, because it's thick, you will get some um, some little bits and pieces. Now I'm going to need to trim that. Um, sometimes it just doesn't quite want to behave. So I will just take the tiniest little trim off of there to make it line up. Oops, see. Yeah, that's better. I'm happy with that. OK, that is my cover. So I'm going to just glue that together. OK, so of course I should have checked my glue. I'm going to be using my art glitter glue because I just now find that this is my my glue of choice for most things. It does an awful lot of jobs very nicely. I pin up there. OK, Ooh. no, not playing. Every time I do a video and this happens, I say to myself, Remember to check the glue before you start. Here we go. Oh, it's not. It's not. And I need glue to work. So we may have to change glue. We'll see. Oh, no, it's coming now. Good. OK. See all these things that you should think about. I thought I was prepared. And I always forget this. OK, so glue it down. OK, and that's just got a really sturdy cover. So we'll pop that out of the way and then we're going to make two pages. And again, I'm going to cut my page down to 29 centimetres this way. So the height of my pages is the same height as my cover. That usually works a treat. OK, and then I'm actually going to take a centimetre off this way. So I'm going to cut this down to 20. So in other words, when I fold it over, the page is just going to be um, that little bit neater to tuck in. OK, so we will now score at 10 because this was 20, wasn't it? But this score is the same as the cover. Oh, no, it isn't. Sorry. Wait a minute. What have I told you? Yep, 14.5. Don't worry. I just had a moment there. OK. So same height as the cover, scored at 14.5 and it's a bit narrower than the cover, so scored at 10. So let's fold that over. And to save time, I have got a second page, but let me just check I've cut it the same size. Yeah, I have. Right. Okay. So let me fold that one over like that. And the same again here. Let's give it a little bit of a... Bit of persuasion both sides that will help okay and if i've got it right it should fit in the cover and it does excellent okay and then this one the same exactly the same as the first page like so now what i want to do with this is make some pockets i'm going to make one page with two sidey pockets there and there and one page will have Top pockets there and there. Okie dokes. So let's make, I'm just now literally 
this is just me being a bit of a perfectionist here, just, just trimming up the odd little bit that doesn't quite sit right. You know. and, and that's not because the measurements are wrong, it's because this card's so thick that by the time you've done all the folds, of course. Um, but I think I'm happy enough with that. It's good enough. Let me just check that these fit in the cover. They do. Right. So let's make this one into a side pocket. Um, so I'm actually going to use my pencil. So I want to glue along the bottom. OK, and I'm also going to put um, a line of glue down the middle here. And that way I won't end up with this giant pocket with everything sliding about. OK, um, and it isn't necessary to glue the top. So we'll go down the middle. Just kind of like either side of the score is probably a good thing to do. And then along the bottom here. Shut. So I'm just going to do that and that for a minute while we do the other one. Just to help it glue down. And so here's my other one. I want this to be a top pocket. So this time I'm going to glue down my sides here, here. I really hope I'm in frame. And let's do, we'll do it along the middle again as well so that we don't, again, we won't have that huge, huge gap in the middle that things might fall out of. Okay. Right. So along here. Okay, do that. Hopefully these two are done so I can glue the bottom of this. Okay. Now you could stitch around at this at this point if you wanted a little bit of extra strength, but it seems to work out okay for me. So we'll leave those just as they are for now to dry. Um, and let me show you the paper that I'm going to use. Now what I've done um, is actually print my pages out at half size, um, you know, two to a page. Um, and most printers will do this. And of course, that is absolute beauty of a digital kit, isn't it? That you can, you know, you can you can print two to a page, four to a page. You can, you know, do whatever you want. Um, and so I have chosen some to actually, um, you know, make smaller. But um, you could equally use, I mean, these collage pages, the images are more than small enough for you to, just cut up and use uh, and not worry about, you know, making your printer do things if your printer doesn't want to do. Um, but also, I mean, some of these would be perfectly acceptable as well, just as they are. So, you know, that's something you could play about with. I'll pop them back out of the way. Um, and now I've got my, got my pages pre-cut. I've pre-cut them and I've pre-distressed them. Um, and so, um, my, I've got two different sizes, so I've got four pieces, not that one, four pieces for my cover, and they measure 14 centimetres by 10. Okay, so they are half a centimetre shorter than the actual page. So this is the cover, I hope, 14.5 by 10.5. So my cover pages are there. Okay. And I said I've distressed all around. And you know what I haven't done? I haven't actually distressed the cover page. So indulge me if you would for a moment. While I do that. While I do that. Right. Um, I wouldn't even bother trying to screenshot that because my handwriting's so awful. Um, you won't get anywhere. So that is why I said I'd put it on there. Put it on the bottom. Um, so I'll just do this and then hopefully everything will be glued nicely and we can stitch it together. Uh, 
Um, so it's a um, really um, glorious, glorious day in Scotland. You know, May is always, always seems to be a pretty good month here. Um, and, you know, pretty much every year we go, well, this is lovely. Hope it's not our summer. Uh, quite often, yeah, it's been, it is the best weather of the summer. But that's Scotland for you, you know. Um, we take, we take what we get. Now, of course, yeah, you don't have to distress your pages. It's completely up to you um, what you do. But I just like that. I just think it helps make them just stand out that little bit against your background, um, particularly with this cream background that I'm using. Right, hopefully I have done all the pages. Do you know, I think I must have got, must have got interrupted at some point. I've done them all except these. And don't quite know why I got interrupted, but there you go. Um, that. And I've got that. Right. got a timer set actually I'm going to try and bring this in um, under 30 minutes because if I do that I can upload it straight from my phone uh, and not have to worry Mr Mac to do things to it so um, page eight I've actually already numbered these pages as well in the order that I want them so you see I did do a, I did I did do quite a lot of prep um, it's just just the glue has let me down right okay so pop those out the way Bring in our pages and our cover again. Hopefully now, yep, I've got top pockets here and here. Okay, they're quite neat, um, but that's okay. I don't mind that. And we've got a page with side pockets. Okay, so next job, let's get it stitched together. Uh, now I know that some of you know how to do this, but you don't all know. And so feel free to whiz ahead if you know how to do a pamphlet stitch. And if not, I'm, I'm going to do it. So the first thing I need is my booklet. So my cover. Doesn't matter whether I put the side pocket one in or the top pocket one in first. That's us. Okay, so I'm just checking again that it all sits nicely. All right, so the middle page, I'm going to take the middle page out and just make some markings. So I know it's um, it's 14.5, isn't it? High. Okay, so I want the middle. Um, so half of 14.5, of course, is it would be 7.25. Okay, and then I'm just going to come in on this one. I'm going to come a centimetre and a half from the bottom and I'll just measure a centimetre and a half down from the top. So that's that. OK. Um, if you want to do a five hole pamphlet stitch, even better. I'm not going to do it because it will just take that much longer. And I think for a small journal, we can get away with not doing it. Right. Let's pop all our pages back in again. Check that they're all in the right place. My top pocket is where I want it at the top yep and at the side I'm, I'm i'm kind of thinking about do i want to put any um notches in and i think for this one i'm not going to so let's clip it together the bulldog clips All right. OK, so it's like that. You can see the marks. Now, if I do that, um, things all start to come apart and move. So you want to work as close, closely closed up as you can in a V shape. All right. So now I have got my all. Take that. Whoops. 
that's my thread. OK, so I'm going to position my all in my middle there and then close the book up as much as I can. And if I've got it right, I've come out the spine. Great stuff. Of course, we can cover the spine. If we make a horrible mistake, I'm going to cover the spine anyway, but, you know, it's quite nice to try and get it right and get it to come right out where it's meant to be. So through there. So I'm using an old um, cake maker's um, mat. So nice and spongy. Um, and if you haven't got a mat that you can use, a, a sort of firm foam mat, then the paperback book works quite well, actually. So that's that. We have holes. They're in the spine. I think that one I'd probably make a bit bigger. Right. Take that out of the way. And then I have got my needle. So it's a sharp needle, actually. And I've got some waxed linen thread, which I have got. It's a, just over twice the height of that. All right. There'll be some waste, but I'd rather that than... Um, be trying to tie a knot with, you know, not enough. So we start off down the middle. Actually, I'm going to put that back on the pink because I think you'll see it better. OK, so down the middle. And hold on to your tail. OK, so we're going to go back down the top here now through the middle. And again, it's not a bad idea just to close the book up while you do that. That's us through there. OK. OK. And now I'm going to go back down my middle hole. And I need to be careful. Try not to split your thread. OK. All right, I nearly lost my tail there. So I'm pulling it tight and then I'm going to go through my final hole at the bottom here. OK, that's me. And I'm going to come back up here and just tuck that in under there. Yeah. And I'm going to take that out of the way. I'm going to take these out of the way as well. All right. And I am just going to pop that one under there as well. So there's, you know, nice and tight. So make sure. That this is good and tight on both sides. OK, and then we're going to tie a square knot or a reef knot, whichever you prefer to call it. So I'm going right over left and under there. Check again that it's tight. Yes. And then come back left over right. Under there and let's just trim a little bit off. OK, cool. That's that. Happy with that. So that's just got our little booklet. Actually, I might just take a bit more of that off, actually. That's us. OK, so there you've got well, a little booklet, mini journal, whatever you want to call. All right. So let us now stick pages in. Um, so what I did um, earlier was cut my pages to size, as I said. Um, and then I also um, I've, I've worked out where I want them to go. So I've just written on the back here what, where they are. So this is my front cover. I'm just going to glue them all in. Oh, that was probably my head. Let me just be absolutely sure that my top pockets are at the top. Ha! <laughs> top. <laughs> and that's that. And then I've got one for the inside front cover. So I think it's probably this one. Yep. This really is such a pretty kit, isn't it? Just glorious. Okey dokes. 
Let's go back over this side. Let's do, I think that's my inside back cover. Yes, it is. In we go. Happy with that. And now we've just got some pages to put in, I think. Oh, a minute. Back cover. Back cover. So really, um, this is a journal that you're going to put together in, you know, not a lot more than um, yeah, an hour or so. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm getting to get this together a bit quicker than that because I've um, you know got everything pre-cut. But okay. Sauce, page one. This is two. Not the straightest. Oopsie. Okay, that's a bit better. And I think this is page three. Yep. I just love, love the, you know, the colours in this and the way it goes together. I just thought it was super. Cara loves rainbows. Um, she loves things that are, you know, multicoloured and all the rest. And so, you know, um, you can see it here again, just her absolute love of rainbows. So here I am in the middle. Um, now, here's, a, here's the thing. Um, when I've got an image like, like this bird, um, I personally prefer that my image flies into my picture, if that makes sense. It points in um, rather than pointing out. I mean, it's uh, probably just being fussy, but personally, I think your eye likes that better. Oh, my eye likes it better, so that's what I'm doing. But you know, there are um, so many um, flowers in this that it's only sort of the more I looked at it that I thought, hmm, you know, there's a lot of birdies in it too. Um, And of course, I do like a birdie or two. So that's what I've done. So this is our middle. The middle. Nearly there, nearly, nearly there. I mean, obviously, I have spent a reasonable amount of time working out where I wanted things to go. Um, but it's kind of possibly not a bad idea to do that, to sort of think it through, um, you know, make a pencil mark um, to remind yourself or clip it into your journal where you want it to go um, and give yourself some options. I must admit that um, I have learned now, it doesn't matter with something like this, but with a bigger journal, um, I think it can be very tempting to sew your signatures. Oh, I've got them all and I'll sew them in and then regret it because you think, oh, actually, I wish I'd maybe stitched something else down the side or um, made a different kind of flappy page or something. And then, you know, so it's sometimes an idea just not to be in the biggest hurry to get your pages sewn together. So for this one, it's kind of planned already. 
Okay. Right. So let's just have a little flip through and see what we think of that. So we've got this lovely orange front cover. More orange. Here we've got a top pocket. Here we've got a sidey pocket. In the middle, another sidey pocket. Top pocket there and back cover. Um, now it's pretty stiff. Um, and as you can see, I've just literally made it into kind of a booklet without a, a spine. Um, the first one I did slightly differently. I made a spine um, and that makes it just that little bit, a little bit tinier. Um, not much, but a little bit. Um, but if you make a spine, you can put, I haven't, but you could put more, more pages in. Anyway, that's where we are with that. Now I am going to cover this for a little bit of um, extra security and I've got this rather nice um, it's it's Tim Holtz I think it's called linen tape I think um, I've had it a while but I just thought these colors were utterly perfect um, so I know I want that to be there and I know I want it to be 14.5 so I can mark it here on the inside of this Fourteen point. Oh, sorry. Head. I think I might have moved my camera angle from previously. All right. I wonder if I can cut that across in a straight line. That'd be good, wouldn't it? See what we think. Oh yeah, pretty much bang on. All right, so this has got a nice peel off sticky background so we don't have to worry and it, it's it's good and strong. Um, I've, I've tested it out. It's really sticky so I'm not going to put any extra glue on it. And let's Try and get it straight. It's always a good idea. I've got a little bit more. It's a little bit longer than I need it to be. It would be, wouldn't it? But let's pop it on there. Oh, it's perfect. That's all right. I'm not going to fuss about that. And then I'm going to just push it round. Like that. And that's just reinforced the spine a bit, or the stitching. That's us. That just hold that all nicely together. Okay, and then my final thing, um, I've got some, I've just got a strip of material and I, I just thought the colours were perfect with this. So I'm going to just tie it up with that. Now, obviously, um, it needs ephemera. Um, it's going to get journaling cards and it's going to get tags and I'm going to decorate the pages. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to just tie this up now and stop here. So I'm just going to go round like that, cross at the back. About there. And just tie it in a wee bow. And I'll probably end up putting some charms on it as well, but um, enough for now. So that's us. I hope that's useful and you might think about having a go at doing it. Um, and um, I will see you in the next video. I will probably do um, a proper flip through and show you, you know, everything I've done to decorate it and all the, the tabs, tags and journal cards and everything. But that's me for now. So thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.